Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be learning how the air conditioning system in your car works as well as how to recharge the system if you're low on refrigerant. So a big thanks to AC Pro for sponsoring this video. Now I think it's a good idea to understand how the air conditioning system works before performing any work on it. So let's go ahead and talk about that starting with the compressor. Now the compressor's job is to transform low pressure, low temperature gas into a high pressure, high temperature gas. And so what it's doing is it's squeezing down that refrigerant, that gaseous refrigerant, and as it's squeezing it down, it's of course increasing the pressure, but as a side effect of increasing that pressure, the temperature rises as well. So now we have a high pressure, high temperature gas, and our next step is to go through the condenser. So leading into the condenser, the goal of this is to transform it from a gas to a liquid uh, before it reaches our evaporator. And so the way that the condenser does this is by cooling that gas. And so you'll have a fan or, you know, just the motion of the car itself as it's driving, which is going to blow ambient air through this condenser. You've got this gas uh, moving through these passages along the condenser. And so as it cools that gas, not a lot, but enough to condense it, uh, you know, similar to how clouds work. So for example, you have water evaporate, it goes up into the air, it cools it, and as it cools it, it condenses into liquid. Uh, similar things happening here, um, but our temperature change, uh, still it's going to be high temperature after it leaves. So we've condensed it enough, we've cooled it enough in order for it to condense into a liquid. And so leaving the condenser, we have a high pressure, high temperature liquid, whereas entering it, it was in the gaseous form. So the next step is to go into the receiver dryer. And so what it's doing in here is it's going to pass through a filter to remove any debris, and it's also going to pass through a desiccant in order to remove any water from the mixture. So you don't want to have any water in this mixture uh, because as you get to the evaporator, it could freeze, and then that could, of course, damage your AC system. So you've got your liquid moving in, high pressure, high temperature. You have your high pressure, high temperature liquid moving out of the receiver dryer. And next we're going to pass through the expansion valve. Or it could be an orifice tube depending on the system, uh, but most of them are going to be using an expansion valve. So what does the expansion valve do? Well, essentially what it's doing is it's controlling the flow of your refrigerant into the evaporator. And so what it's allowing to happen is for the uh, pressure to drop. So it's going to allow the liquid to come out at a slower rate. Um, and as this liquid is coming out, it's giving it time to expand. Uh, and in doing this, it's going to be dropping the pressure. And so as a result of the pressure drop uh, working opposite uh, as a compressor would work, we will of course have a temperature drop. So the compressor squeezes it all down and that heats it up. The expansion valve is letting it expand back. And in doing that, uh, it's going to drop quite a bit in pressure. So we're still gonna have mostly liquid coming into the evaporator and it's going to be at a very cool temperature. And so this is where your evaporator comes in and this is how you get cold air within the cabin. So you're gonna have a cabin fan, which is gonna blow ambient air over this evaporator, over these fins here, and then those fins will absorb the heat from the ambient air, and then that cool air will pass into your cabin uh, and cool you off. And so what's happening is, as this uh, refrigerant absorbs the heat from the ambient air, it's going to essentially boil uh, that liquid. So the liquid's gonna change from a uh, liquid to a gas, and in doing that, it absorbs quite a bit of heat um, and so you're gonna have nice cool air that flows into your cabin. So now you've got a gaseous form of the refrigerant. It's at a low pressure and at a low temperature. Uh, you could have an accumulator if you do use the orifice tube. This is simply to make sure that if you have any liquid that remains, uh, it doesn't go into your compressor as liquids are of course incompressible. So we're gonna have that uh, low temperature, uh, low pressure gas go back into our compressor and then the cycle will repeat itself. Having a look under the hood of my Integra of the actual components, you can see the compressor which is driven by an engine belt on the right side of the engine bay. That of course sends refrigerant to the AC condenser, which is located up front with the radiator using the same fans for cooling. From there we travel to the dryer with a high pressure line from the condenser providing a port to the high pressure side of the system, and then a high pressure line leaving off to the expansion valve. The expansion valve and evaporator are located within the car, underneath the dash, and then a return line travels out, sending gaseous refrigerant back to the compressor. So now that we understand how the AC system works, let's talk about how you can recharge your system if it's low on refrigerant, and in this case the refrigerant used is R134A. We'll be using a kit from AC Pro, which includes everything you'll need to do this, though I would recommend also picking up a thermometer to test your results. The first thing you'll want to do is turn on the engine and then turn the AC on its highest setting. 
Next, you'll want to check that your AC compressor is actually working. You should be able to see the compressor clutch engage and the system cycle on. If the compressor is not running, it could be because there is not enough refrigerant, so you'll need to add refrigerant if it's low. Either way, we'll want to continue to the next steps. For cars with very slow refrigerant leaks, this can be a good fix because it includes additives to help gaskets and o-rings swell to create a better seal. Next, we'll need to find the vehicle's low pressure port to connect up to. This is often marked with an L on the cap covering the port and is of course located on the low pressure side of the system. Unscrew the trigger dispenser from the can and remove the red and white shipping disc by unscrewing it. Next, we'll connect the fitting at the end of the recharge hose onto the low pressure port simply by pushing it on. You should hear it click when it connects. There's a long hose on the bottle in case the low pressure port is in a hard to reach area. Be sure not to pull the trigger as this will release refrigerant from the vehicle. Now we'll read the pressure on the bottle. You'll want to turn the dial so that the arrow points at the outside temperature of your working environment. In this case, I've turned the dial down to 70, the lowest setting, since it's less than 70 degrees outside. If the pressure is in the white or the green, we're ready to proceed. If the pressure is in the red and the compressor is running, there's something else wrong with your system which will require repairs outside of the scope of this video. We want to bring the pressure up between the two red lines for a completely charged system. However, it's critical that we do not overcharge the system because you'll have to have it taken into a shop to have the system professionally discharged. In order to make sure we don't overcharge the system, it's important to monitor the pressure gauge on the bottle. Another simple trick, though not necessary, is to stop adding refrigerant once the average temperature from your AC vents stops decreasing in temperature or starts slowly increasing in temperature. Now on my car, the pressure was already in the sweet spot, so I don't need to add any refrigerant. The rest of this video will be for demonstration purposes. Disconnect the recharge hose from the vehicle, connect the bottle up to the trigger, and then shake the can well. Then reconnect the recharge hose to the vehicle. Squeeze the trigger to dispense refrigerant into the system. Hold the can upright while charging and rotate it 90 degrees back and forth every few seconds. Every 10 to 15 seconds, release the trigger to check the pressure of the system and continue this process until you've hit your desired pressure. Once you've reached the desired pressure, disconnect the system and replace the low pressure port cap. And you're done! Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.